Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a lead code problem called plus one. As you can see here, this problem is categorized as easy, so it shouldn't be too bad to get through, but there's a little bit of a trick to it, which we're going to see in a minute. But let's start out by reading through the problem. So, given a non-empty array of digits, representing a non-negative integer, increment one to the integer. The digits are stored such that the most significant digit is at the head of the list, and each element in the array contains a single digit. You may assume the integer does not contain any leading zero, except the number zero itself. And then we're given a couple of examples down here. So we see that our input is that non-empty array of digits. In this first example, we have one, two, and three. And our output is gonna be one, two, and four. So basically what they want us to do is to look at this array of numbers as a single number, as 123, and increment it by one. And that's how we get 124, or 124. And in the second example, you can see again, we have an input array of 4321, or 4321. And if we increment that number by one, we get 4322. So these examples are very straightforward. We can pretty easily imagine how we would accomplish this in code. With these examples, all we'd have to do is access the integer at the last index in the array, increment it by one, and then we can return the array to get our solution. But can you think of any other edge cases here that might make things a little bit more complicated? Well, how about if we had something like this? We had an input array of one, two, and nine or 129. Now, if we get the integer at the last index in the array, which in this case would be the number nine, and we increment it by one, we're gonna get the number 10. And this is gonna be a problem because as we were told explicitly in the instructions, each element in the array must be a single digit. So what we're gonna to have to do in our code is we're gonna to have to throw in a conditional statement here. Before we can go ahead and just increment that last number in the array, we're gonna to have to ask the question, is that number less than nine? If it is less than nine, as we saw before, we can simply increment it and return the array, and we're done with the problem. However, if it's not less than nine, that means that it is nine. And what we're gonna to have to do is change that number into a zero and carry over the one, add that to the two to get 130, or one, three, and zero. Now, before we get totally happy, there's one more case that we need to explore. And that is a case where we have a nine in each index of the array. Like for example here, we have an array with nine and nine. So let's look at what would happen in this case if we follow the approach that we've been using. So we have the number 99. We'd start at that last index of the array and we're gonna use a conditional statement to say, is this number less than nine? And here it's not less than nine, it is nine. So we're gonna change this number into a zero. We're gonna carry over the one, but now what's gonna happen if we add that one to the nine? Well, we're gonna get the number 10. So that nine is gonna to have to become a zero. The one is gonna be carried over, but now you can see that that one looks a little bit lonely. So really what we need now is an array with three elements, not just two. We need a one, a zero, and a zero. So at this point in our code, we're gonna to have to increase the size of the array and add a one to the start of that array. So let's dive into VS Code now and see how we're gonna work this all out. So the first thing we'll do is we'll define our function, which we're calling plus one. And it's gonna take as an argument an array of integers. So we'll call it nums. And so we can see our result. We'll console.log out plus one and we'll pass it an array. So first we'll try one, two, and three. And what that should result in is an array that looks like this, an array with the numbers one, two, and four. So as we saw before, this is the easy case here, where the integer at the last index of the array is less than nine. So we can simply increment this and return the array. But what we'll wanna do is we're gonna to want to create a loop where we start at the integer at the last index in the array check if that integer is less than nine. If it is less than nine, we're just gonna increment it and return the array. Otherwise, if it is nine, 
we're going to set the number at this index to a zero and we're going to continue on in our loop. So let's start creating our loop here. I'm going to say for let i equals nums.length minus one. And then since we're going to decrement i, we want to loop while i is greater than or equal to zero because we're going to be checking each one of these numbers, even the one at the zeroth index. And then, like I said, we're going to decrement i each time. So i minus minus. So let's go ahead now and create that conditional statement that we talked about where we're going to check if the number at that index is less than nine. In the best case scenario, that number will be less than nine right off the bat. And we can just increment it and return our array. So let's see what happens now if we save just with this code. We should get our answer. And we can see here on the console that we do. Right, because we've met this conditional statement right off the bat and we're returning right away. But then let's say that this was actually 1, 2, and 9. Well, now what we're looking for is to get 1, 3, and 0. Right, because that's 129 plus 1, 130. So we're going to look to get this, 1, 3, and 0. So in this case, when we get to this conditional statement, the number at this index is not less than 9. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually set that number at that index to equal 0. And now since i itself hasn't equaled 0, right, in this case we're still at the second index, now we're going to go back around in our loop again and we're going to check the next number. So we look at the next number and we say, is that number less than 9? And it is less than 9. So what do we do? We take that number and we increment it by 1 and then we return our nums. So let's save and see if we get the right answer. And there we go. Now we get 1, 3, and 0. Woohoo! And now finally, let's take a look at that last case that we talked about earlier. And that is where we have all 9s in our array. So for the sake of this example, we'll just do 9 and 9. And so ultimately what we want is we need 99 plus 1 or 100. So we want an array with 1, 0, and 0. And the thing to note is that this array that we're going to end up with, it's going to be of a larger size than the input array. So let's go through the code that we have and see how it handles this case here. All right, so we start at this number. We see it's not less than 9. So nums at i, or this one, is going to be set to 0. All right, then we continue our loop, and now we're at this one. We say, is this number less than 9? No, it's not. So we set the number at this index to 0 as well. Now at this point, we're going to try to loop around again. But what's going to happen is that now, i is no longer going to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Because we already dealt with the index of 0. So we're going to break out of this for loop. And what we're going to want to do, because at this point, what we have is we have an array with 0 and 0, right? Because we set each of these 9s to 0. So what we're going to want to do is push in a number to the front of the array. And that number is going to be that 1. And how do we do that in JavaScript? Well, we have a method called unshift. And the thing is with JavaScript, we have dynamic arrays. So if we simply unshift the one into the front of the array, that array will dynamically increase in size. So all we have to do is take the nums array. We can use unshift and pass in the number one. And then we can return the array. And let's save and check out the console. And here we can see we have 1, 0, and 0. Now just to point out, we couldn't just return nums.unshift1 because when you use the unshift method, what gets returned to you is the size of the new array. And that's the case if you were to use the push method as well to push a number onto the end of the array. What you would get returned is the new size or length of the array. So after we perform this operation, now we can return the nums array. The big O. Oh, snap! So if we think about the runtime complexity of our algorithm here, we can say that it's O of N, or linear time. And that's because if it comes down to it, we might end up going through every single index of the array before we get a result returned. And the length of that array is going to depend on the length of the input array that's passed in. But why don't we go ahead and copy our code and we'll paste it into leak code so that we can confirm that it works.
So we paste it in here. Let's run the code. Accepted, and then let's submit the code. And here you can see, success. All right, well, thanks for checking out this video on this plus one leak code problem. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Consider subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.